I think because I do everything ahead of time, it doesn't like it to, they want me to do it right away. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got about one minute. Okay, great. Did you want us to count down or we all sound good? Um, Lindsay, you sound good. Um, is it Stacia? St Stacia, okay, perfect. Uh, go ahead and count back from five for me one time. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, and you're just using uh, the internal mic on your computer? Uh, no, I'm using my earbuds. Earbuds, earbuds, okay, perfect. All right, that is good. Um, sounds all right. So we are good to go. Um, 30 seconds, we'll get started. Okay. <clears throat> I know. This is going to be so much better than your last experience, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you heard me talk about it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Have a great show. Welcome to Women Thriving Unapologetically with Lindsay McCowan. Over the next hour, you will hear raw, honest, and inspiring conversation between Lindsay and her guests discussing how to thrive, live joyfully, and abundantly in spite of life's challenges. Now, here is your host, Lindsay McCowan. Welcome everyone to Women Thriving Unapologetically. I'm your host, Lindsay McCowan, and today I have the extreme pleasure of having a very special guest on. But before I invite this amazing woman on, we are going to take a moment to stop and pause and breathe. So wherever you are, just take a moment to stop all the busy activity. If you're driving, obviously keep your hands on the wheel, eyes open, but just drop into your body in this moment. And what I mean by that is take several deep breaths down deep into your belly, just feeling your belly expand with each inhale and hug inward with each exhale. And if you're in a place where you can do so, place your hands upon the part of your body that you criticize the most, where you pass judgment, where you wish it was different, where you've heard perhaps other people criticize your body, or it's simply that internal voice. And then breathe into this area of your body. And allow the hands just to be an extension of your heart energy, a heart that is filled with compassion and love and truth. And what would it be like to release that judgment, to le release the criticism or perhaps even the shame and to feel simply joy and love for this vessel, this incredible body that is with you from the time that you are born until the time that you die. Would it be possible to honor it as a vehicle to experience this amazing life? Take another deep breath in and out. So we're going to dive deeper into how we can love ourselves and love this body. And our guest, Stacia Savasic, is going to join us today to help us with this revolution where we can love our bodies through experiencing and claiming our own personal style. So Stacia is a Vermont-based personal stylist, dynamic teacher, and a body posi positive advocate now and recently claiming that she is a style activist <laughs> whose TEDx talk launched an international revolution drawing clients from all over the world into her signature program. Stacia has infectious energy. I love talking to her because she has so much joy that just bubbles out from her and she has grit and she ushers women into feelings of insignificance, body shame, and that perpetual state of why bother into a state where they can radically accept themselves and love themselves for who they are, who they're meant to be, and how they want to show up in the world. So I'm extremely honored to have her here today and joining us. So thank you so much for being here today, Stacia. Did, I do, your, did I do your name right? Did I get it right? It, it was so close. <laughs> okay, so, so close. close. 
Savasic. 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 Yeah. You know, we talked about this before. It's a tricky one. It seems like there's a curse because every single person, no matter how much they practice it, <laughs> at that moment of truth where you have the to- The moment of truth. Yes. It's like, got it wrong. Yeah. And you know what? <laughs> I do it too. So I think it's just this thing that happens. I'm on and pressure. It's okay. Pressure. Yeah, totally. It's okay. Okay. So thank you for being here again. And I'm very excited just to dive right in because even though we have an hour for our show, it goes by so fast, especially when we have so many amazing things to talk about. And I'm just so curious, like, you know, how for me personally, like I was, I'm, I've since COVID, I've just been behind my desk working from home. I barely, you know, I wear the same thing day in, day out. It's nothing fancy. It's just about comfort. And I feel like I've lost my sense of personal style. And with that, I have been feeling a little bit like not as celebratory of my body, And so I'm like, wow, this is so interesting that I'm not, you know, after I started to hear you talk and what your, your mission is, I'm like starting to notice, wow, I really am starting to dampen down my clothes and I'm starting to feel the dampening of my light in some ways. And I'm pretty bold and big and Mm -hmm. work, but I was like, wait, Mm -hmm. let me think about this a little bit. And it made me think Mm -hmm. of Elizabeth Gilbert when she talked about in her big magic book that if you want creativity in life to show up for you, then get dressed for it. Like get dressed for it. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, I'm like, what should I wear today? (laughs) It's radio. (laughs) No one can see me. But, uh, and so it got me to thinking about that. And how did you come about with this work? I mean, how did you start to realize by changing your clothes and acclaiming as a vehicle for claiming your light and your boldness and your worth? Um, It's a great question. And it, you know, it's still a funny thing for me. You know, I've been doing this work for eight, 10 years now. And I still am like, really? I do personal style? I hated style. (laughs) I was, you know, it was just something that I never understood. I didn't get it. I thought it was for those kind of people, not for me. Um, I just had all these reasons why it just, you know, it wasn't something that, it, it was something that stressed me out. I'll put it that way because I didn't know how to do it, right? And I couldn't figure out what my style was and I was on a budget and, you know, just like I couldn't, I just could never figure it out. Um, and really the, I didn't, it like didn't even happen on purpose. And it really started um, when my oldest child, who's now 15, was just a little bibbit. She was just little and she was born with a lot of, and so this is, you know, part of what I'll repeat is something that you've heard in my TED talk, but she was born with a lot of, um, physical differences. And my goal as her mama was to do everything I could to make sure she fit in, right? Like that was my thing. And so I worked really hard to make sure that she had all the cutest things all the time. And she hated everything that I put on her. And it was so frustrating for me. And she always wanted to wear, and I'm going to throw quotes around a word that I'm going to use because it's not the way I typically talk about clothes anymore. Um, But this is 15, you know, 14, 13, 12 years ago. And so then we put her in, she only wanted to wear boy clothes, right? And so that's when I'm throwing air quotes around because I have a much more broad view now of, you know, sort of gender neutral clothing or clothing not having a gender. Um, And there was a real tension there uh, of me wanting to make sure that she fit in and her saying, but this isn't like, this is, I I don't want to wear these cute jeans and these little dresses with the matchy panties, you know, the little bloomer bottoms. Yeah. And she just didn't want to have anything to do with it. And so really the whole, like the whole thing started for me was in that tension, in that friction that I had with my child who I wanted to make sure fit in, knowing it was going to be a hard road for her in some ways, just based on my very typical experience of never feeling like I fit in and I'm just regular. I don't have any physical differences, right? So I was like, I'm going to go all in on this. And um, so there, there was that tension and she ultimately won. And we had this really profound moment in a thrift store because I all my I thrift, like 90% of my closet is thrifted. Um, and we were at a thrift store and she wanted to buy a shirt and tie. And I was like, absolutely not. Like, we're just not going to do that. And I just kind of went around it, went around it. And then she came up with a sales, like one of the sales people came up and was like, they they like, she got backup. (laughs) 
of a bugger. She came up with this brilliant person. Yeah, with a shirt and a tie. They were horrible. And the woman was like, they're three dollars. Are you really gonna say no? So I totally got peer pressured into buying my kid a shirt and tie. And then we got home and she had this moment. She put on her shirt and tie. And she ran across the living room and said, mama, look how much faster I can run. And then she jumped up and down and said, look how much higher I can jump when I'm wearing clothes on the outside that feel like me on the inside, right? And I was like, first of all, that's really profound. Yeah. <laughs> You're four or five, you know, she was just little. Um, and, it, and, it, and it really like a whole paradigm crumbled. Like my whole, like this whole fitting in paradigm crumbled right before my eyes because if she doesn't belong to herself she will never fit anywhere yeah, right and so true. that was really the beginning of me understanding what i now call and is really the foundation of my business inside out congruency who are you and how do you want to show up in the world where what can you put on your body that is a reflection that connects you to your essence your soul fire, your that sort of the, you know that place inside you that's never been wounded, that sort of like the beauty within. And you know, when you were doing your intro and talking about, you know, I'm on the radio, nobody's gonna see me. So it's, you know, those kind of things. And it's for me, style and getting dressed has nothing to do with anybody seeing me. It has to do with the resources. Are you, yeah, I can are you hear hearing? You. Yeah, I can hear you. No, fine. but I hear, I hear me five minutes ago. Oh, okay. So I don't know what just happened. Okay. Is it still happening? So you can keep talking or you can take the, your, your earbuds out. So we're live radio stations having a little bit of IT things. So we can just see what happens if we go with the nothing. She got nothing. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take an early break so we can figure out these technical uh, difficulties. And, but please don't go anywhere because we are gonna jump right back into this conversation and how important it is to really own like your self-worth and not for someone else's personal pleasure. Okay, we'll be right back after this. I think we're all clear. Okay, so. I I'm hearing us three minutes ago in my headphones. Okay. Any ideas on that? Um, Whoa, no, that was that's weird. Very strange. I don't know yeah, what that would be. Um, I was it... hearing the recording three, like not three minutes ago, but maybe 30 seconds ago. Oh, my Do you word. have anything open on your computer? Like That was crazy. Because I couldn't, the, the recording was loud. I couldn't hear you. I could, you were both talking at the same time. The recording was going while you were talking it just happened all at once so do you have uh, anything open on your computer right now i can't or? even hear i can't hear you because the commercial is in my head right now the okay. ad yeah you uh pull out your headphones please pull pull out your headphones oh i need to un i need to disconnect them whoa that was bananas can you hear me now yeah yeah um do you have okay. the do you have the feed open I can't on your hear browser anybody do you have the feed open on your browser? Sorry about that. That was really bananas. That's never happened to me before. Can you hear us now? Yeah, my Mac here, my volume up, oh, volume up. Can you try speaking again? Can you hear us okay? I can hear you now. Is everything clear and good? Everything is good, but I'm like- you, Do you have um, like the show open on like a, a window browser that's playing the live stream? No, no. It, no, I have nothing open. Huh, okay, that's very strange. Yeah, we'll just go with that headphones then because that's, yeah, that's that's pretty odd. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was weird because you were speaking, but then five minutes, the three minutes ago talking was really, really, it was louder. So it was double talking and I. So you're, everything's fine now. You can hear us fine now. Yes, that gave me okay. stress. Whew. Okay, we'll Sorry be about that. I don't know that's what, okay. I mean, I don't know what happened. We're trying to make this a better experience for you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What was that? Oh, how okay. I'm so sorry. That That's that, okay. We'll jump right back. We'll happened. have a little bit longer really of a segment experience. this time around. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. All right. Yeah. And we'll come back here in a little less than 20. Okay. Oh, 
I wasn't very gracious in my Okay, coming back. You are listening to Women Thriving Unapologetically with Lindsay McCowan. Have a question for Lindsay or her guests? Want to share your story? Email Lindsay at thrivingunapologetically at gmail.com. That's thrivingunapologetically at gmail.com. Now back to the show. Here again is Lindsay. Welcome back, everyone, to Women Thriving Unapologetically. This is Lindsay McCowan. I'm here with Stacia. Okay, I'm going to get this right. Savasic. Oh, yeah. I did it. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we had a little bit of technical difficulty. This is what happens sometimes with radio, but we're going to be all calm, cool, and collected while we're, we're good. jumping we're right good. back in. It's a little bit weird for me, but it's I'm okay. okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'm okay. Well, it happens. And this is part of like when we really, as women start to kind of step into owning our worth and, and really being aligned with that, that greater truth of who we are, then when we have these challenging moments, whether it's just having some technical difficulty on a live radio show or, you know, someone getting ill or someone being mean to us, we can stay centered in that place and it's okay because life happens and how do we stay steady and calm in that? And part of what I love about what you do is you're helping women find the, that truth through style. And it really is this whole idea of what you call wearing our worth. Like, how do you wear your worth? Can you tell us more about how you can, like what that means for you and how you help women wear their worth? Well, and I, I think it always starts with a question is sort of, what do I need today? What do I need to access? What is, and it, it, it starts with the assumption that I already am everything that I need to be. I'm not broken. I don't need to be fixed. Everything that I wish was me is me. It just may be something I haven't yet cultivated. The only way I'm going to cultivate it is if I practice connecting to it. Right. And so even this morning I got dressed and I was like, I'm feeling fiery. And I had on a red sweater and I was sitting and having my breakfast and, you know, nourishing my body. I have a morning breakfast ritual. I have a call it my fancy breakfast and I sit and I, you know, decorate the table and it's so lovely. And then I was like, you know, my brain wanted me to be fiery, but I'm actually feeling a little more easy. I'm feeling a little more, I want to go into this radio show with a little more, with my feet on the ground a little bit. I want to feel a little more centered, a little more, you know, grounded. And so I changed my clothes to support what it is that I knew I needed walking into the show. I can be a pretty high vibrating person with a lot of energy and a lot of adrenaline. So it's like, yeah red, right? Is what, but sometimes that energy is, is not actually what I need. It's my default. Um, and so it takes intention and practice to say, actually, I want to connect to a different part of me right now. Um, yes, this is a part of me. I love this part of me, but there's another part of me that I want to connect to. So I'm going to put on my like dusty eggplant sweater that just the material, the fit, the color just took my energy and went, right. And brought me more into my body rather than that excited, you know, sort of like brought me out of my excited chest and into my belly. And I'm able to do that by changing my clothes. I look down, I see it. It's a reminder. My clothes become a touchstone for the parts of me that I want to connect to and cultivate. And this is so beautiful because, you know, my background is yoga and meditation and neuro encoding and all of those things. And, um, but it's so fascinating because we speak this similar languages, but we have a different modality to help women like, okay, how are, how can you be really aware of what you need in this moment? And it always starts with that awareness. And so few of us have that awareness, or I won't say so few of us, like at one point in time, I didn't have the awareness. I would just put on like what someone else told me, like, I love fashion growing up and, but I would always still be in that container. Oh, you can't wear white after labor day, or, you know, that color isn't great for you, or that's what you should be wearing. 
And it's like, wait a second, what do I feel I need? And what's going to make me feel more grounded in this moment? Or what's going to make me feel more alive so that the clothes can be that personal reminder? And I think that's just brilliant that you bring that in. So that because the clothes are on you all day long, and if you need to change them, you can change them. Change your clothes, yeah. I think it's such a beautiful way. I, I think it's something, for me, it's something that's always been really accessible because I get dressed every day in something. I mean, I'm not naked, so I'm wearing something, <laughs> even if it's my pajamas or my yoga pants, like I'm putting something on my body. And for me, when I go to my closet in the morning, the question I never ask is, what am I going to wear today? Because that right now, that like automatically disconnects me from my body. Right. And it turns it into this heady experience. And so I sort of stand in front of my closet and I, you know, hands on chest and I just kind of feel into my body. What do I need today? How do I want to feel today? What do I want to connect to? What do I want to cultivate? And then I get dressed from there. Right. And so I am setting myself up first thing in the morning for my day. And if I forget, I did this recently and I got dressed and I was, you know, our cat had gone missing and I got dressed in all black and I was walking around the house and I was like, was fast. And I was felt, I felt like furious. And I, and I was like, whoa, like, I'm just wearing all black. My, like, this is like, I feel hard. I feel edgy. I feel, I don't feel like I'm sad and I need to you know, I want to allow space in my body to feel the sadness that my kitty is missing. So I went to my closet and I changed into a completely different outfit, pinks and blues. And it was like, I could feel myself move from like a response to sort of like my world to being integrated into my world. It was just, it was profound how when I get dressed, if I find myself buzzing around, disconnected from myself, I know I haven't chosen correctly. So I go back and I choose something different. And then it's like, I can feel, it's almost like my body goes whoop, like, <laughs> like, sh- like the succopator sucks me right back into my body, as opposed to having this sort of like buzzing outside of my body experience, which is where I tend to live, which is where our culture puts most of us, right? Because we're chronically busy, chronically hustling, chronically trying to prove our worthiness. You know, (laughs) it's like, there's so much out there that just keeps us buzzing and humming. It's pretty, I call it revolutionary, R-E-V-E-L-Y-O-U. So it's reveling in yourself. It's pretty revolutionary to say, I'm going to sort of opt out of all of that and come into my body and lead from this place, as opposed to from the hustle, from the busy, from the fighting for my worthiness. Um, and it's so interesting because when you just put your hands on your body and you say, what do you need? Cause I often do this, but I've never done it in my closet. Uh, <laughs> I do it for other things like, Oh, I'm not, I'm feeling a little sad today. So I put my hands on my body. What do you need? And then I'm, I let myself be guided that way. But like you said, like the, the clothes are so accessible and it's just like the first stepping point to something even bigger, like now you have this practice, put your hands on your body. What do you need? You can do that at any point of the day for anything. And it becomes this practice of bringing yourself back into the wisdom of your body, which is where your power is. It's not out there in everyone else's expectations or in that hustle and the chaos and the frenzy and the pushing, but it's within us. And I think oftentimes we as women or everybody really forgets that this is where our power is. And this is how we can take that back. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's been, and I, and, you know, with, with the inside out congruency sort of, you know, what am I, what inner resources do I need and want to connect with today? Um, I think there's this whole other piece that, you know, is so, so important. And it's, you know, the congruency part, so, so important, but it's also bringing you into relationship with your body because now your body's wearing the clothes. And so then it's, are you wearing clothes that, you know, connect you to soul fire, connect you to whatever it is that you want to be connected to? Um, do they fit you? Like, that's kind of a big question. And if I, I work with women, I work with thousands of women And we do at the end of style school. So that's my signature program, style school. At the end of style school, we do curation. We curate our closets. And it is 
with uh, almost across the board, women get rid of between 50 and 75% of what they own because it doesn't even fit their bodies because they've been holding on to it for so long, right? And of course that leads to writing all kinds of stories inside your head about your body being a bad body or not having a good enough body, or your body being a problem or whatever. Um, or not celebrating the body you have in this moment because you're holding on to a size that's, you know, that you were 10, maybe even 20 years ago. Yes. It's yeah. Not, it's I call not... that your today body, sort of the celebration and acceptance and showing, um, I talk a lot about showing love to your today body um, and showing love is different than loving, right? So if I'm acting loving toward my body, it doesn't mean I'm like, woo, that cellulite is so delicious, <laughs> right? Like you, I can't trick myself into that, but I can say, I can act loving toward my body. One of the, like I was saying, I have my fancy breakfast in the morning. That's one of the ways, one of the many ways in which I show love to my today body by nourishing it with foods that feel really good. I do the same thing with my clothes. It is a gift I give to my body to wear something that fits me, that feels good, that allows me to look in the mirror and not go, ugh disgusting, which is what I used to do. I spent decades. That was my word I would use to describe my body. Disgusting. It, it like blows my mind. I was like 22 saying that when I was, when I was thin and had no cellulite, (laughs) you know what I mean? And I still thought, so that's when you're like, it's just brain, you know, brainwashing. We're never supposed to feel like enough. We're never supposed to feel good enough because it doesn't matter what your body looks like, right? Um, for that shame to be so, so present. And I just, by wearing clothes that fit my body, you know, pants that don't give me the muffin top or hurt my crotch when I sit down because the rise is too short and they're too small, but you're like, they fit, they fit. I, can't, I can't breathe, but they fit, right? Like really being able to say, no, I'm not going to do that to my body. I'm not going to wear things that are uncomfortable. I'm going to wear things, of course, that fit me, that make me feel good, and then connect me to the things that I want to be connected to. Because if your pants don't fit, doesn't matter if they're your favorites, right? If they don't fit, they don't feel good. That's going to trigger all the negative voices inside your head. They're going to say mean things about your body. So you're not going to move very far. So there's two components to it, right? The congruency part, Absolutely. Using your closet as a tool to connect to the parts inside you that you need to connect to. Um, And then also making sure that the clothes fit you. (laughs) It's really, really important. And understanding that, yeah, it's hard to find clothes that fit because I know there are listeners going, right, but clothes never fit me. And I want to say that's kind of the human experience. We have this expectation that clothes should just fit us. Because we see those are no longer tailored. So you have to go pick something off of a rack that in all sizes are not consistent, you know, and a size eight in one brand is really a size four in another. A size eight in one brand is a size four in the same damn brand. There's no consistency within brands and even a size. And I've done these experiments before where I was like, I'm going to go and I'm going to try on 10 of the same exact jeans in the same exact size. None of them fit the same. Wow. I've had some that I'm like, okay, this there fits me perfectly. This one, I can't get past my knees. Same brand, same manufacturer, like same, 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 same. I can't get them past my kneecaps, right? And the other ones, I'm like, I need like seven belts for these. They're all the same size in the same brand, in the same store. Thank cut. Not even like it was the skinny versus, no, same, same, you know? So it's all very arbitrary. (laughs) Um, This is such great information for us as women listening, because, you know, we have to let go of the size, like the size and just how does it make you feel? Like, how how do you want to feel and let go of trying to shrink yourself? Because that's just part of that conditioning. How small can we get if we're the smaller we are? the prettier we'll be, or the more that we, you know, we are. Yeah. Yeah. The more worthy we are. So how does like, so I'm just going to, let's just, that's a nice segue into how can going through this process really help us start to unravel some of that conditioning that 
we have as women, like, okay, from the patriarchy, they were going to throw that word out there because it yeah. needs to be thrown out. Yeah. <laughs> it's out, it's out of the patriarchy. <laughs> That's as far as I'm concerned. Yes. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's part of our social conditioning and it's part of, I mean, it's even bigger than just patriarchy, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, if we look at the beauty standards that we, up, that we hold up. So this is the thing that I think is really, really critical is we abide by the beauty standards that are abusing us, right? We are not only victims of the beauty standards, we are complicit in making sure that they stay strong, right? That they stay standing. And what's so unfair about them is at the top, at the pinnacle of the beauty standard is a typically a tall, white, slender, able-bodied person, right? Woman. And it's right out of the gate, beauty standards are, they're ableist, they're racist, they're you know, they're, they're they're like misogyny is dripping through the whole thing because it's what have men found to be beautiful in women that becomes the ideal and that becomes the standard. And so the whole system is anti-woman because even if you're sitting at the top of the beauty standard and you've got the boobs and the butt and the waist and the thick flowing hair and the thigh gap or whatever it is, if you've got the things you are only there because you're standing on the shoulders of somebody else that's trying to work their way up this hierarchical ladder, right? And so it's just unjust in all the ways. Um, so I think it's important to recognize that when I say something like, oh, I can't get away with that, that's me saying, I believe in the beauty standards. When I say, I can't wear a mini skirt, I'm too old for that. I'm saying I believe in beauty standards because it's ages too, right? You have to be a certain age and after that you're expired. Um, so every time we throw ourselves under the bus, we are saying I, I pledge allegiance to the beauty standards that, <laughs> that have been controlling my life for decades because we can, we, it's so easy to say, I don't believe in the beauty standards and then follow the beauty standards rules. Yeah, because like, what so happens creepy. if we don't follow the standards? What does that mean? Yeah, that's why that's when that's when things get that's what I call it a revolution, <laughs> right? When you start reveling in yourself into how you feel in your body outside of the beauty standards, it's a completely different paradigm, right? Because now I can say, you know, I just had this experience yesterday where I wore um or orange, they're like bright orange. I got them at the thrift store for like eight bucks. These bright orange heel platformy wedgie shoes with jeans. I have never in my life wore heels with jeans. Like I live in rural Vermont. That's not really a thing here. Um, and I wore them yesterday and I was like, whoa, too much. Can't get away with this. Like that was my, that's my, my trigger thought. And I was like, whoa, this is really interesting. So then what I did was I said, well, let me feel what it feels like to wear this outfit. And I was standing in my shoes and I was like, the shoes feel good. And then I was like, okay, how about the jeans? How did the jeans feel on my body? They feel good. How does the shirt feel on my body? Feels good. How about these big giant earrings you're wearing? Ooh, they're tickling your neck. They're flirting with you. Feels good. So my experience in my body is good. And then I look in the mirror and I say, but I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm not this. Now I'm trying to be somebody that I can't be. So I have just measured myself up against a beauty standard. I'm not tall enough. I don't get the legs for that. I'm too old. You know, I'm almost 50, whatever. That, that's when I get into trouble. But if I move back into my body and my, my experience in my body, I feel sensational, right? That's that's the work is the, the thoughts come up in our heads and we go, right, but how do I feel in my body, right? Like, oh, my, the cellulite on my thighs, just like sit and be with your legs. Actually, I feel like my legs 
we're like, they're good. Like good. Like we're doing good things, good legs right now. Like I'm having a good, but then the thought kicks in, but they're not as smooth as they're supposed to be. They're not as long as they're supposed to be, but they have cellulite on there. They have dimples, they have stretch marks, they have veins, whatever. That's when we get into trouble. If I just stand here and connect with my legs, it's going to be pretty, pretty good right? When I just focus on that experience, if I'm not in significant pain or, you know, anything like yeah. that. Um, and that's beautiful because when you different. just stand there and you can feel into your body, you're not looking in the mirror. You're just like feeling into your body. Like, how does my body feel? It's like, it actually feels good. Then there's more love there. Mm -hmm. The love is right there. It's like, it's interesting. As soon as we look into the mirror is when the love starts to break down. Like, well, being able to love, like send, what, what, what did you say? The loving yourself, showing love to yourself, showing yeah. love to mm -hmm. yourself. And what I have found for myself personally, is that when I've been able to show love to myself, because, you know, I didn't believe, you know, that I love this part of my body, but when I could just show love to a part of my body, that's the doorway into actually experiencing love for myself. hundred percent. Yeah. 100%. And it's just like, oh, Act, and over time, just by showing love for myself, showing love for myself, even when I have a headache, even when I'm yeah. feel, you know, distraught, even when, you know, I don't feel like I look my best is that all of a sudden I was like, oh, the more I do this, the more that do this, like I actually do love myself. Mm -hmm. And that is just revolutionary for me. And I think it's revolutionary for a lot of the women that you work with, um, and so I imagine that you get to see so many incredible transformations mm. with women doing this. Oh, it's uh, when I am in a session at style school, style school is five weeks long. I have, um, I cry every day. There's not a day that goes by where somebody doesn't come in and share their, like share an aha moment, a breakthrough where they say something like, you know, I got dressed in this today. And the, I call them giblets, sort of like those voices inside your head that are trying to throw you under the bus and say mean things to you. Um, and the giblets were yammering, but I, you know, I stuck with it. And then it was some, you know, later in the afternoon, I walked by a mirror and I took my breath away. Mm. Right. Like, can you imagine like the, the, like, I, I looked in the mirror and I was like, there I am. That when women have those moments, and sometimes it happens on day four, sometimes it happens on day 25, right? And they have that moment because it's, it's, you got to do, yes, yeah, a lot of stuff to dig through sometimes to find that and to be gutsy enough to explore your closet in a brand new way because we get into ruts. We wear this with that, and this is how it is. And then I say, why don't you take your shirt and roll your sleeves up, cuff your pants, put on a necklace. You don't have a necklace, make one out of some cardboard and some tin foil. I don't care. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. Uh, you don't have a scarf, take that pillowcase in the back. I see behind you, grab that, wrap it around your neck and just try something new, right? Explore, like just be curious. Like style school is all about being curious and going places we've never been from before. My rule in style school is day one. You cannot wear anything you've worn before the way you've worn it before. Like, of course you can wear the same pants every single day that you're in style school. I don't care about that, but we're going to wear them differently than we've worn them before. You wear this shirt with these pants, tuck it differently, flip it backwards, turn it inside out, change your socks, put on different earrings, part your hair to the other side, do something different every single time. It's such a great, just life lessons. I mean, just like oh. we get so stuck and doing the same thing day in and day out. And then all of a sudden our life feels lackluster. Mm -hmm. Like how do we bring more luster back in our life? We have to be more curious. We have to be willing to do something different, even if it's a little uncomfortable, even if it goes against some belief systems, especially if it goes against some belief systems that we've been carrying for a really long time. So I think this is just incredible work that you're doing like, okay, let's get in there. Let's make yourself a little uncomfortable so that you could become more comfortable in your bodies yes. and take ownership yes. back of that and self-authority. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we are coming up on our second break of the show. So don't go anywhere. We're talking with Stacia. Okay. I'm going to do this again. Savasic. Savasic. Yeah. Savasic. Oh. We're like right in the middle there. Wicked close. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. But while, so don't go anywhere, but in the meantime, 
jump over to my Instagram account and sign up for the three-day live event that is happening this coming Monday, September 26th. And it goes through Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, where we're going to dive into how to awaken your sacred feminine power. And there's many ways that we can do this, but I'm going to share with you three goddess practices that have really helped me tap into my own personal power and reclaiming my worth. So I look forward to be having you in the group. It's totally free, easy to do. So just sign up and I'll see you there. And we'll be right back with Stacia. All right, terrific segment, all clear, back in two. Thank you. How are you feeling? Good. Better experience than before? Hmm. We're, we're cruising. We're cruising. We're doing, we're doing, we're, we're cruising. Doing, we're cruising. Okay. Um, so I, my, I haven't looked at any of my notes. This is, this is what I love about having a great, a, um, a great, uh, guest on the show. We can just have an incredible conversation without, um, our notes, but, um, is there anything that you would really like to touch on that we haven't touched on? Of course, we're going to bring in, I want you to talk about your style school and that's coming up soon. Mm -hmm. Am I correct on that? Yeah. It's yeah. in October. Yeah. Okay. I know you didn't have the dates quite nailed when it we was October. I, I, um, I, registration opens October 7th, October 7th. Okay. Perfect. And that's uh, 17th. Okay. So we want to have time to talk about that, but uh, is there anything else that you want to touch on that we haven't quite. I just like seeing where the conversation, where the ebbing okay. and flowing goes. So that's Sounds good. good. Okay. Hmm. So one thing that I find challenging um, when, with the women that I work is that they don't fully trust themselves. Oh, yeah. They don't trust themselves. So I'd love to bring in a little bit of that. Like, it's just, we trust everyone else's opinion, but not our own. Yeah. So. Yeah. And so much of that is, you know, it's the kind of where you, where you left off is, when I do one little tiny thing, people are afraid when they tuck in their shirt, when they cuff their pants, they're, when they pop their collar, when they do anything that's just a little different than before, but it's how we build resilience, right? One tiny little brave thing at a time, then you get through it and you're like, oh, I did that thing. That's amazing, right? So it's these little things that I think are so impactful. Yeah. I'm sorry to jump in, but we are about to come back. Okay. You are listening to Women Thriving Unapologetically with Lindsay McCowan. Have a question for Lindsay or her guests? Want to share your story? Email Lindsay at thrivingunapologetically at gmail.com. That's thrivingunapologetically at gmail.com. Now back to the show. Here again is Lindsay. Welcome back, everyone, to Women Thriving Unapologetically. I'm here with Stacia. I'm not even going to try the last name again, but to say Stacia. <laughs> Stage is good. Stage yeah. is good. Yeah. You're just like the one word, like the yeah. one name. Yeah. Know? So I've always said that too. I just want to be Lindsay because um, <laughs> no one can get my last name right either. So let's just drive back in. You know, during the break, we were talking a little bit. I mentioned to you how a lot of the clients and the women that I work with, that what really becomes apparent is how little they actually trust their own intuition and what what they actually need where they've been so conditioned to look outside of themselves like okay what is everyone else doing and maybe i need to try that on or that on instead of really trusting their own internal guidance system it's this something that i imagine this is what you're seeing a lot with your clients and the women that you're working with as well absolutely and it's and it's and it makes sense right because when we're looking outward to say what is everybody doing how do i make sure that i fit in our bodies are biologically wired for connection, right? And so if everybody's wearing the skinny jeans, I'm going to wear the skinny jeans, even though I can't put them on my body and they do not fit. I'm going to try because I want to be part of the group. I don't want to be on the outside. I have this drive that's going to override everything that's going to make me want to fit in, right? But at what expense? Because and there's a perceived safety in that. It's just like the perceived basic nervous that. system wants to keep us safe. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is, 
you know, this is residual stuff from our childhood. When once we learn, we, you know, so we're biologically wired for this connection. Once we learn that if I do what everybody else does, then I then I become part of the group. That's that's now our that's our operating system. Like that's the blueprint in which we are going to operate now. So it takes some work to realize that that safety that we're seeking outside of us is really tenuous because I'm depending on somebody else to tell me whether or not I belong. I no longer have any say. So if they tell me, no, I fall to the ground. I'm on my knees in tears. It feels like a gut punch, right? So the work I think is bringing it, bringing it in, learning to trust yourself, creating that safety inside yourself where you're no longer dependent on anybody creating that safety for you. I have found, and there's so many different ways to do this, but the work that I do with women, which is really fun because we do it in our closets, is we do small, brave things every single day to practice trusting ourselves. I say to you, why don't you Put on two different earrings today and people go, I could never, <laughs> whatever, right? Like, how about you cuff your pants? How about you wear the black belt instead of the brown belt, even though you're wearing the opposite color shoes, right? Like, how about you wear a silver and a gold necklace at the same time? So I will often intentionally invite women to break the damn rules and then sit with that discomfort right? When you feel that discomfort, tend to yourself. Oh, this is hard for me. The conditioning is strong. Yeah. Cause girl, yeah. good girls don't break the rules. We don't break the rules, right? We don't break the rules. And so it's all, it's that. And then just kind of sitting with yourself and then the end of the day comes and you're like, Oh yeah, I did that. And you're, and then so, you know, and, and one of the things that I'm always so like, or like vocal about it. it's like oh but it's such a small thing I can't believe I'm so embarrassed I'm so afraid like I, I'm just, you know it's like all I'm doing is checking my shirt in yet I'm terrified this is so ridiculous and I'm like no this is not ridiculous this is huge these small things are big things because of the ways we have been societally trained to be obedient mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter if you're breaking the tiniest little rule or the biggest giantest rule <laughs> It's going to send shock waves and alarm bells are going to go off in our bodies, right? So being able to do these little tiny rule breaking, different than the way you've done them before things, right? Even things like yesterday with my heels and jeans, never done it before. My brain was like, bah, bah. I don't know where to process this. I don't have any prior experience to match this up against, to say this experience is going to be safe for you, Stacia. So I'm going to shut it down. Who do you think you are? You don't have the legs for this. You look ridiculous. That's my body's way of saying, I don't have, I, I don't know what to do with this new data. It scares me. Just, well, like, let's shut it down. Right? So then I go, oh yeah, you're feeling nervous body. It's okay. We got this. It's orange shoes and jeans. It's really okay. <laughs> right. You put in a little perspective and then the end of the day comes. Now your brain has a new piece of data to match it up against. Next time I go to wear the jeans and the heels, I'm going to be okay because now my brain has data. It was okay. Right. So this is me creating safety inside my body. And I can do that by doing a little brave thing every single day. Feels like nothing. I wore one shade darker lipstick than I wore worn before. Amazing. I'm so proud of you for being brave. Those small, tiny, manageable, controllable acts of bravery over time build resilience, right? And yeah. that resilience is safety. It's felt safety inside our bodies. We can do this with our closets. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I just, it's, my, it's mind blowing. It's, mind -blowing. I think it's phenomenal. Yeah. And it's like you said, it's just like one small thing at a time because, yeah. and we know this as coaches and, you know, with our clients, we can't like take them all the way out there to the biggest thing because it will no create, you know, it will be just too much for them. You have yeah. to start with a small, consistent things over a long period of time. I'll throw in a little yoga uh, sutra here. It's like, it says like we, the way that we build this resiliency and change is through consistent practice 
over a long period of time. And we do it with awe and reverence. So in your case, you know, it's all in reverence for yourself and your own body. Like have these small changes, keep doing them, build the resilience, be in all of your beautiful body, show love to your body until you can walk past that mirror and be like, damn, you look really good today. Or what did you say? There she is. There she is. There she is. And yeah. wow, isn't she amazing? And then to celebrate, this is something I teach my clients too, is like celebrate, like really celebrate those moments because it creates that stronger neuro conditioning, like neuro synapse. Mm -hmm. And it really builds that. So now you have new neuro pathways to come back to. And like you said, now when you put the orange shoes on and the jeans and the shirt, which I saw on Instagram, by the way, fabulous. I was like, pretty good, right? <laughs> it's great. It looks awesome. I'm like, where'd she yeah. get those shoes? <laughs> yeah. Orange is my favorite but, color. Yeah. It was yeah. great. And so I just absolutely love this. And it's so easy. It's like so accessible. Walk into your closet, put your hands on your body. What do you feel? you need today? What do you need today? Um, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's really been life-changing for me and it's been life-changing for the women that I've worked with. Right. Because it, that it no longer becomes about what will people think It's how do I, how do I feel? And I will. That right there is so powerful because if we stop believing what, you know, all that conditioning, all the advertising, all the marketing, all that stuff that keeps coming in, telling us what yeah. we should be wearing, how much we should be investing into products. Oh. And guess what? We hold the power. Mm -hmm. Oh, the whole system would crumble. Wouldn't that be amazing if we all decided to not participate <laughs> in the beauty standards hierarchy? It would oh be incredible. God. I know it would be no. incredible to have all that power back within our own bodies and yeah. the, that self-sovereignty again, self-authority would be yeah. incredible because we wouldn't yeah. be trying to adhere to someone else's belief about what we should look like and behave like. Which by the way, is always changing. So you will never catch up, right? You're like, I finally figured it. I finally, fi wait, that's not true anymore something it's something else now right it's always shifting it's always changing and so you will be spending which is wicked smart for the for the multi-billion dollar companies that are making bank off of our backs right yeah. every time we need something new and the new color of the year the new and I'm like I don't know I just bought whatever found that I love that made me feel good <laughs> you well, know I, just, I read uh, not too long ago that it could have changed by now there's no longer four seasons in the fashion industry there's like 10. There yeah. might be more now. So it's always changing. We always can't, changing. Never keep and up. The, I mean, and the, 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 the impact, you know, you heard me say that I thrift the impact that the fashion industry has on our planet is if you like, if we knew the impact, our shopping, our incessant shopping, our need to fit in, to keep up, to have a new line to do, like, if we knew the impact we wouldn't be able to continue because the, the, the guilt would overwhelm us, mm. but that's all hidden behind a curtain. So we have no idea the impact of our choices. It's, I mean, pe people literally die because of our choices working yeah. in horrible conditions. You know, I mean, it's just, there's so much, I mean, I could, we, we could. Yeah. Really talk and I also, that. I read somewhere um, and I can't quote where I read this, but that, more clothing goes into landfills than plastic. That was mind boggling for me. Like, well, and most clothing now is plastic. If we think about it, all the synthetic clothes, all plastic, it's mm -hmm. all plastic. These like, like, oh, those cute synthetic pants are going to be on the planet for the next 10,000 years. Think about that and how that's to toxifying. Is that a word? To toxifying. It is for today. <laughs> Cre creating toxins. <laughs> I don't know, putting toxins into into oh. the soil, into the waterways. You know what I mean? It's really devastating. It's really devastating. Yeah. yeah. Which is why I thrift. So, yeah. So, um, which is amazing to me that, that a small town in Vermont can have such amazing thrift clothes. <laughs> but I think I, everybody, I, everybody in town thrifts, we all thrift. So I'm like, oh, it's like, oh, you're wearing my sweater. You're wearing my shoes. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, I love so it. We're getting, I mean, we're getting close to the end of our show. So I don't want us to lose 
the opportunity to hear how our listeners can connect with you. I mean, you have Style School. It's this coming up October the 7th. Yes, it's registration cool opens on October 7th, last session of the year. So it's five weeks, and this is let everyone know a little bit about the Style School. Style School is awesome. <laughs> I know I wrote it. I know I go like the teacher and it's so fantastic. It's so great. And I've been teaching it for a long time. And every time I teach it, I teach it better, right? That's what I love about teaching is that you're always, always, always better. Um, so it's five weeks long and we really walk through a lot of what we've talked about on the call. Week one of style school is about connecting to soul fire. What are, who are you and how do you want to show up? What are the parts of you that you are looking to connect to, right? Week two is about understanding your body. It's collecting your body's data and learning how to dress it in a way, dress her in a way that you can look in the mirror and go, there she is. So often we try to hide parts of our body. And then whenever we do that, we're like putting neon signs saying, look here. So we learn how to stop doing that thing that we do by creating balance and proportion. Week three, we get really gutsy with color. Week four, we play with accessories. And that's when I'm like, try this, try that, mix it up, do something different. Like, and I have a prompt every day. So you're not doing it on your own. There's a prompt. Um, and then week five is when we curate our closets, when we take everything out and we only put back what we love. So it's not a purge. It's a, it's a curation of your collection of things that connect you to soul fire. It's really magical. Yeah. It's it's really where great. can we learn more about that? Tell us, is it on your website? Yes, you can check me out at stacia.savasic.com and please visit me on Instagram. It's my Stacia Savasic is my handle. And I put out so much free content on Instagram. I'm so always following you. I don't just write a one paragraph. I write like a newsletter every day, sometimes twice a day, just because I have so much to share yeah. because I want this to be a revolution for all of us. I love that. So definitely go visit Stacia on her um, IG handle Stacia's here we Savasic. go. Savasic. <laughs> so her website by the same name and then join her on October 7th for her yeah. style revolution and our style school. So thank you so much. I so enjoyed this conversation and I hope our listeners got great value out of this. Cause I know I did. So everyone, you are listening to voice voice America empowerment channel. I am Lindsay McCowan. This is Women Thriving Unapologetically. And be sure to go and check out the three-day live experience starting next week where you get to dive in for three days straight with me um, for one hour a day. And we're going to learn some goddess practices to help awaken your divine feminine power. So definitely jump over to my website or to my Instagram and say hello to both Stacia and myself. And we'll see you next week, same time, 10 a.m. East coast time. Many blessings. All right. Nicely done. We're all clear. All right. And I will uh, try to clean up the, um, the end of that first segment where we were having the tech difficulties there for a little bit. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. No problem. All right. okay. you both have a great rest of your day. Okay. Bye. Yay. Okay. Better than the first radio show. Yes. It was okay. wonderful. Thank Yay. you. Okay, well, let's do this. Let's jump over to the Facebook group and see. Oops, let's jump in and just and see if we have any questions. Oh, yeah. Ari says, I love this. I'm a style junkie. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too. <laughs> it's so interesting. I used to be um, when I was younger and I guess, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure you probably hear this a lot, but and probably from every, every single woman from every decade, but I've noticed that now that I'm 50, it's like, I don't know if it's this combination of like, you know, I'm fine. I'm more comfortable in my body than I've ever been. So I don't pay as much attention to the style that as I used to, um, or if I'm just getting lazy <laughs> <laughs> or if it's a combination of just being in a really great relationship and we're both really relaxed with our style and I have permission not to worry so much. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I asked myself that now a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I think it depends on how, I mean, we're all going to approach it differently, right? So style is a practice for me getting dressed. It's not just this thing I do when I have to do something. 
getting dressed is a practice. And so I will be doing this when I'm 87 years old, right? Because it is a practice for me. It is how I intentionally connect to myself every morning. And it's how I really stay connected to myself throughout the day. It's one of the ways in which I honor my today body. Um, and that doesn't mean I'm dressed fancy, right? Like it just means that even my pajamas are congruent. They're not just like whatever knockoff homely color I could find on the clearance rack. They're ones that fit really well, that are in a color that I love, that make me feel held and, you know, nurtured my hiking clothes. I hike a lot. My hiking clothes, my exercise clothes, my gardening clothes. I don't, I think our closets can be a space of tremendous guilt and shame and I, and in good enoughness. And, and I just, I value my body too much to, to just put any old thing on it. Right. So even if it's just leggings and a sweatshirt, it's going to be a good sweatshirt and a color that I love that has, that feels really good in my body and leggings that don't squeeze me like a sausage or, you know what I mean? So it doesn't matter what I wear. It's going to feel good. As soon as my clothes start making fun of me, that's what I say. Like I have no time in my life for pants that make fun of me, um, or bras that hurt my feelings. You know, like I just don't have time. I don't, it's just not, it's a, it's a no-go for me. I just won't allow any of that to happen. I love how you worded that, how brought, like the, how the clothing can hurt your feelings. A hundred percent. And here's the thing. If I am going to let a bra, a bra, a pair of underwear, <laughs> socks, because, oh, they make, and my ankles are too wide. If I'm, if I am going to let socks hurt my feelings, guess what? people are going to walk all over me. If I can't stick up to myself to a pair of socks, <laughs> then so true. It's, it's, I mean, it is. And this was me. I was like, okay, okay. Yeah. Whatever you need, whatever you need, but yes. Yeah, okay. But like, right. Like I just, I, because I took the position that I was a problem that needed to be fixed. And so long as I was a problem, I was apologetic. I apologized to my socks. I apologized to the person that bumps into me at the grocery store. I apologize to the person that cuts me off, right? Because I'm leading with the assumption that I'm not worthy. So as soon as I start sticking up to myself and say, underpants, you are not allowed to crawl into my butt anymore. I'm getting new ones. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna happen, whatever. I'm sticking up for myself. I'm saying I am worthy of having underwear that fit me well, right? I am worthy of having jeans that fit me well that don't say, if you lost weight, you know, whatever, you know? So I just think, I think it's such a, there's so many lessons and learnings that I have gained by being really mindful of what I put on my body. Yeah. And I love how it's just, you know, your body is not an apology, uh, an apology, but you say it's, you know, your body isn't the problem. Body isn't the problem. Yeah. And you, it's, you don't need to fix the body. You need to fix the conditioning that you have in yeah. your noggin. Right. And that's what so often I say is that you don't need to change your, you don't need to change your body. You just, you just need to change your mind. Yeah. You it's know, so, in so many different ways. And yeah. I just really appreciate how you're bringing this important work through um, a modality or a vehicle that is, is fun. It's really fun. Style school is really fun. I know. I'm looking at the time. I'm like, the seventh. I'm already in to um, do other trainings. I'm like, I want to take style school because this is more fun than what I'm doing right now. (laughs) It's really fun. (laughs) Well, that's what's fun. That's what's great. I think that's what's so unique and why people love style school so much is it's, it's, it's like deep. It's like, it's like therapy, but it's not grueling. I mean, you'll have a hard day. You know what I mean? Like that's of course going to happen when you're doing this deep work, but when you're doing it and you're like playing with rainbows of colors and you're playing with sunglasses and lip, you know, when it's involved, when you're doing work through this lens of play and curiosity and wonder, it's so beautiful, you know, and there's so much connection that happens in that space. It's really, really incredible. Well, I feel like I would need to take style school for both for 
my I only have four seasons and because I change out the clothes in my closet because there's not a, enough room for all of them. And so every season I look at it like, hmm, this, this I don't know about this, but I'll just hold on to it because I want I liked it one time. Yeah. Maybe I'll wear it, maybe I want. But and then I just I, hold on to it and then pack it back up and I don't wear it the whole season. Uh, so I live in Vermont where we for sure have four seasons. I have never changed out my closet. I have my clothes and I have a little tiny closet. It's the only closet in the house. I share it with my linens and my vacuum and I share it with my husband. I have this many clothes. What? That's how many clothes. Now I have. That is mind boggling because I follow you on Instagram and I'm always seeing all the different things that you're changing. If you look, I'm wearing the same things over and over and over again. I just wear them differently and people have no idea. They're like, that's a new sweater. I'm like, I have worn it literally like 75 times in the last six months. <laughs> okay. This is why I need to take style school because <laughs> I literally wear the same pants. Like I have, it's my favorite pair of pants. I have them in yeah. three different colors and they are incredible. Cause I do, I can hike in them. I can do yeah. yoga in them. I can sit at my computer all day with them on and I'm super, super comfortable. And that's super, that's important to me. Yeah. And important yet, to everybody. I wear the yeah. same top with it, you know, or I'll change the top every once in a while, but I always feel like I look the same. I look the same. I look the same. And that's the thing is we're too, di- for me, I will, I mean, I can speak for myself. I'm far too dynamic and I suspect you are too than to be the same every day because you are not the same every day. You're not the same throughout the day, right? And so I think when we do that, we're not honoring our dynamism and our sort of like the tension that lives inside us. So one day I can be an all pastel, the next day I'm an all black, the next day I'm wearing the colors of the rainbow. And some might look at that and be like, but it's not consistent. No, because I'm not consistent. Mm -hmm. I'm dynamic. And there is parts of me that rub up against each other that shouldn't make any sense together. That's the beauty of humanity, right? Don't you think? I mean, that's what makes us awesome is that there's friction that lives inside us. There's parts of us that don't make sense yet. They're all very much there and they all can live harmoniously together if we value them all equally, you know? I don't know. They give each part you know, voice instead of trying to tamp it down or push it aside. And I find this often with the work that I do, especially around the divine feminine, and is that there's so many parts within us that we have just oppressed or pushed down or put aside or made it feel unworthy or like, I don't have time. And we've just forgotten. And well, like our, our brains have forgotten, like on purpose, right? It's such a beautiful way to protect us, but our bodies haven't forgotten. And that's where we have so much, I think that's often why we have tension in our bodies and illness. And like, there's parts of us that are like, I want to get out, but they're being held inside because it served us at some point in our lives to take that part of us and tuck it away because somebody made fun of us. Our parents couldn't acknowledge it. They, you know, whatever, whatever our parents, our grownups in our lives, um, and, and it's that's the beauty, such... like, you know, with the, with yoga and some other somatic movement, it's important to move the body to get that wisdom. It, well, one, to get the stuff that's stuck out or moving the energy moving, but also to release all of that wisdom that's within us. And like, and I'm imagining this because I haven't taken style school, but when you're in that closet and you're changing clothes, you're actually moving the body, it's really moving your body. It's, it is like, it's not like you know, a trained somatic, you know therapy session, but you're moving their body. You're paying attention to what your thoughts are. You're paying attention to how you're feeling, which is all deep, deep somatic work. Yeah. But you're also adding fun into it. Hopefully, you know, you're not, I'm sure, like you said, there's some days where you're still getting frustrated, but eventually you're getting the fun into that. So it is part of, that's one way that we actually build those stronger neuro, um, those, uh, neuro pathways is through celebration. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, if you celebrate, you're getting a nice big old dopamine hit and your body's like, whoa, wait a second. I feel really cool. good. Like, yeah. can I have some more of that, please? What yeah. was I just now doing to give myself mm-hmm. that amazing that. chemical rush? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, I, it's really, and it's, you know, there's so often that I look back and I'm like, huh? Like, and you, you know, what's cool for me is I wrote the curriculum for style school 
um, I don't know, it's like seven, eight years ago now, before I had ever heard of the word somatic or before I had ever heard. And like, and so that's what I love is that everything, because I, the curriculum, the way I teach it has shifted, um, but the curriculum really hasn't changed that much since I started it because I, I wrote it from my body. You know what I mean? And so the whole thing has been very somatic. And I remember early on, people would be like, oh, what is your background in therapy and somatic work? And I was like, I don't, I don't know what you're asking me. <laughs> I don't have any like backgrounds in science. I don't, what are you talking about? Right. But when you come at it through inside out congruency, you're unlocking the wisdom that's already there. You know, when you're, yeah. you're like, I, the curriculum was written from the body, from that sort of like that, who am I and how do I want to show up in the world experience that it really, yeah, I think the, the and we listen to music, Lizzo, oh, it's just yeah. through week one. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah so you're using great. all the tools. And I love how that just came through you, through your own yeah. wisdom. And then, and I think that's important for women to hear is that it's already, it's already in you. Yeah in you you can unlock that's it. what I find yeah that's what I find so fascinating is that I've done a lot of work um in the last couple of years around you know trauma and so you know somatic work and reading a lot of books and taking classes and um but when I look backwards I wrote in the curriculum like I'm like yeah that's what I do yep that's what I do huh that's why that works because people would be like I'm like I don't know why it works it's freaking works I don't know it's like magic but what I've learned is it's not magic it's somatic which is kind of like magic, you know? And so I for a long time didn't understand <laughs> it's a magic, right? I didn't understand why style school was so effective. I didn't know why. Now that I've done, now that I've learned more, I can sort of apply it backwards and build it up a little bit more. Um, and I think your whole story is just beautiful because I think unless we're uncomfortable we don't really grow and change. The universe knows to say, Hey, we need to create a little discomfort for you. And that started with your daughter and, and that, you know, that little bit of, you know, push pull that you were experiencing with her wanting to, to dress a particular way. And you're like, when you finally, you know, allowed her to wear what she wanted to wear, she came out, you know, what was it? What was it? What was it that she said that I feel I, you know, I can run faster and jump higher when I, when I, when I'm wearing clothes on the outside that match so the clothes I, on the outside that match how I feel on the inside. It was just beautiful. Yeah. And that was the spark that created everything. And yeah. so then, yeah. then all this stuff starts to pour through you and you gave yourself permission to do this. Number one, you're like, okay, I, I, I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to do this, you know, um, because you said, you know, who am I? I'm not, you know, huh. I'm not a stylist. You know, I'm not, I don't do sabbatic work or any of that, but you just allow what wanted to come through you to come through you. That's the, that is the unlocking of the beauty and the intuition and the guidance. And you gave yourself permission to do that. And you trusted yourself in that moment enough and enough in enough. that moment to do it. Like I know, barely, not fully, enough. Enough. <laughs> barely enough. I mean, I can't like back in those days, I can't tell you how many times I would just fall to the floor in shame and embarrassment and vulnerability. And I, I mean, there were days I thought I was going to die from vulnerability from putting myself out there the way that I was. Cause I mean, even eight years ago, it wasn't Instagram when I first started, like, the, you know, like that wasn't even actually a thing. Um, when I first started, I was, I was just on Facebook. Um, we weren't doing the, it was just, it felt really gutsy to be putting myself out there like that in a small rural Vermont community talking about style. Like it was really, it was really hard for me. <laughs> I would, I had a lot of major shame attacks. Yeah. But it's just trusting yourself just enough, just enough. And it's going to be in, I want to, for everyone still listening is that it's just trust yourself just enough and then take that step forward. And then yeah. you'll trust yourself a little bit more. And then right because we're never, I don't ever feel like we're going to completely trust ourselves because there's always going to be something to come in to tap into, you know, some yeah. vulnerabilities, but it's just trust yourself enough. And then if you build enough of those connections, then you're like, okay, I have the resiliency. I know that if I just trust myself, that's what the unapologetic um, portion of this show is about is that stop apologizing to your inner guidance system, mm. you know, just keep listening to that guidance and, and stop saying, 
I'm sorry, I don't have enough time. I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not, I can't do this because I don't have enough money, whatever it is. Like, no, just listen to that and then trust it just enough to follow that guidance. Like that, take that one little breadcrumb. I know it doesn't feel like a lot of nourishment, but just take it anyways. Yeah, <laughs> and go. And that, yeah it's that one. It is, it's the breadcrumbs that yeah. um, over time have such a tremendous impact. Well, I'm going to check in with the group one more time and see if there's anything here that we, anyone has any questions? I think we're good. So, ah, this was such a great conversation. I appreciate you saying yes. What we say in, um, in yoga is that you say yes to your dharma, which is your purpose. Your purpose, yeah. I love purpose. That. And so thank you for saying yes and showing thank up you. and yes. sharing your enthusiasm. Your, I mean, you have just so much joy that bubbles out through you. So it's infectious and I appreciate that. And, um, I am going to post the link to your style school and my Facebook group. So everyone can see it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm super happy to share it wherever I can. I'll uh, send out another newsletter with a recording and put that in there as well to my group. Thank you. Yeah. So let me know how I can support you because that's part of what the work I do is. is Yeah. Once I have, is it, so is there a recording? Is it, does it stay on the radio? This is now an awkward question (laughs) because I've, don't know. Oops. Okay. Okay. Pause that. Okay. So, um, Oh, it still says live. Does it still work? Is it still, Oh, it's in Facebook. Maybe still that's what's happening. Yeah. Let me see. So it's still in Facebook. So I don't know how to, I'd have to end this whole thing. Uh, I I see. 